Serious what is the creepiest thing you don't talk about in your profession? I'm a mailman. And sometimes people's houses just creep me out. Sometimes you walk up to a really run down place with their mailbox hanging sideways and you just get a bad feeling like bad things happen here it's also creepy how bad some people's houses smell. And I can smell that speed from outside. If you're a hoarder with 20 cats I can smell all the cat piss and sweet rotting smell as soon as I go up your walkway. Also delivering mail to sketchy businesses that are clearly fronts for something else is never really fun. Can make you pretty uneasy. In the work comp insurance industry, each body part has a predetermined monetary value. So if you lost, say, a thumb or a foot on the job, they just check their price list and cut a check. Sometimes there are different values for the same body part depending on if the part that was lost came from your dominant hand or side. Another fun fact is that it can be cheaper to insure roofers who work on 5 or 10 story jobs than those that work on lower structures because the insurance companies figure in the event of a fall they'll only have to cut a simple check for a preset death benefit for the high rise workers, it's when someone falls from just a couple stories that leads to years of expensive medical treatments and disability payments since they're much more likely to survive. I've always found it a little bit creepy how easily our lives and body parts can be reduced to just a few numbers and dollar signs. I run pools. We make sure our swimming instructors have good training in spotting the signs of child abuse because we see so much more of your kid's body than most other folks in their lives. Bathing suits don't do much to cover up suspicious bruising. Likewise in dentistry. We check for bruising in children's throats. Sick world. There are a lot of nasty ass bugs in shipping. Oh yes. Silverfish. Centipedes. Cockroaches. Scorpions. My personal favorite was when we'd get product in from China and some bugs just come hauling ass out of the boxes to go start a new life or what the feep ever they do. Honestly. The fact that most stuff we deal with causes cancer. Generally. You can be quite safe as a chemist. But it's the long-term exposure that's an issue. Being somewhat not safe over time causes lots of issues. Sure. You always hear of someone who got a liter of solvent to the face. Or got a toxic powder on their arm and was fine. But it's the sum of all your exposures. Not the day-to-day -day stuff that keeps you. Be smart and be safe. Wear gloves. Wear a lab coat. Don't breath anything in. And work in a fume hood with everything. Lab safety is paramount. The little things adding up is what'll get you for sure. Anyways. I gotta wash my hands with benzene before I leave the lab. See ya. The amount of peep bodies you have to deal with slash walk in on. Property management for 5 communities with 2,400 people. 95% college students. 60% of those in high stress. High octane majors. I've walked into 4 suicides in 5 months. And these have been people I've gotten to know. Toured. Worked with to cater to interests. I couldn't imagine it was going to be like this. But I probably should. I had to fix any of it. But it makes for a hard time now and again. I worked in property management for 6 years and Navir founded Peep Body. Finding a resident Peep was one of my biggest fears. Sorry you had to experience so much of that. The fact that human organs are shipped like regular packages at FedEx. I see them almost every day. It's most a company called CryLife I think. It's for organ donation. But we are very professional and careful with these packages in particular for obvious reasons. I did the holiday temp thing at FedEx a few years ago and one of first deliveries one day was a bunch of human feeping hearts and I just was not prepared for that. My roommate's first day at FedEx he shipped a bunch of horse semen. Y'all have very different introductions. I work for a company that amongst other services provides carpet cleaning. Vacuuming is one of the easiest corners for janitorial providers to cut so it rarely ever gets done to adequate levels. This means that office carpeting is absolutely filled with dirt, skin flakes, and literally any other nasty tiny thing you can picture. Carpeting is like a sponge slash filter and if you don't clean it out regularly it gets peeping nasty and can majorly impact indoor air quality. Sick building syndrome can be caused by carpeting alone. Also, people in general are nasty too. In one night, 
In one facility, my team cleaned up piss, vomit, and blood stains on the carpet wearing PPE of course. The amount of skid marks we clean off office chairs is bonkers too. Yeah, the cleaning at my current office is atrocious. I seriously don't think the carpet ever gets vacuumed. That said, the office building I used to work at had worse problems. My office had a nice view. So I think the cleaning staff used it to eat during their break. But one morning I came in and my desk was covered in dried blood. I have no idea what happened but it was peeping disgusting. I bleached my desk and threw out my mouse and keyboard. I wish I never knew this. But I was a hairdresser for a while. And at one point was working in a not so good area. I had just started at this new salon. And the owner warned me to watch out for an older man who would come in after a young girl. That in and of itself was kind of strange. But nothing too jarring. It's also important that we had almost no staff. Do I work many six to seven hour shifts by myself? Well, one day a young woman, maybe 25 years old, came in, and an older man behind her, who said absolutely nothing. I took her to the chair, and like everyone else, asked her what she wanted. She pulled me close to her and said that man there thinks I'm getting my head shaved. He gave me 100, but just trim it. I look back at the man, and there he was, starting to masturbate in the corner. I told him to leave and call the police. The girl started crying in the chair. It was by far the creepiest thing I've seen. I never knew people had fetishes like that. I wish I never knew. First of all, WTF. Second of all, how has this happened enough times that the owner knew it would happen again? Wait, was it the same woman each time? Or did this guy just keep finding new women willing to shave their heads for 100? I drive trains. Statistically speaking a driver in my country will drive over two humans during a career. What really haunts you is the sound. It's a loud thud. I learned this in a gaming group I was part of. Fellow in the group worked for CSX as an engineer. We knew something happened every couple years when he would be online far more often. But not speak to anyone and leave the game if someone tried to talk to him either in text chat or voice chat. He explained at one point in the forums a few months after a multi-fatality car versus train event that sent him to therapy for a while. Undefined. I don't know about creepy but a lot of dietitians have slash head eating disorders. It can attract people who are one obsessed with food and health and two looking for better ways of staying as thin as possible. On a similar note, I studied psychology and every therapist I've met had some sort of mental illness. But really it makes sense that people would want go into a field that they are personally invested in. I got stalked for 9 years by a woman that is a child psychologist at a school. So I can relate. As a teacher, we know but don't talk about it how many of our kids have very peeped up lives. We know which kids have emotionally abusive siblings. We know which kids have no friends. We know which kids' parents pay no attention to their accomplishments. When it's something that crosses the line people abuse, unsafe living conditions, etc., we will report it to CPS. Hell, as far as I am aware, we are required to in every state certainly are in mine. But, there are so many horrible, horrifying, things that kids have to go through that don't cross the line into reportable territory. For example, one of my students two years ago was the only boy out of five children. His mother, her husband having walked out after baby five was born, took all of her aggression out on my student. It was never abusive, to our knowledge. But, he confided in me that his mother just didn't care about him. Any accomplishment of his sister's was praised and celebrated. His accomplishments, ignored. The kid was one of the sweetest boys I have ever taught. All he wanted was to make his mother proud of him. She couldn't have cared less though, because to her he was just a reminder of the man who left her. The kid was emotionally neglected and starved for positive attention. We also know about the kids who have had seriously peeped up speep happen to them repeat. Molestation. Severe physical abuse. Even torture. One girl I taught was peeped by her father and her uncle for years. Her uncle moved out of the country and her father is in prison. 
The situation has been resolved legally. But she is still facing years and years of psychological problems. So, to end my creepiest thing about my profession that we don't talk about is how many of our students are messed up and facing years of therapy because of things beyond their control. This is what scares me about wanting to teach. I just got done helping a middle school out with an after-school program they offer to educate students on emotional intelligence and self-regulation. The students were hand-picked and all had experienced something extremely traumatic. One kid was severely neglected and had been wearing diapers until last year could hardly speak. 2. Another kid's mom was a heroin junkie and exposed to gang violence. Another lost her mom and dog in the same day like last week. I cried the entire drive home thinking about everything that was on their little shoulders. And wondered how much a measly 50-minute program would actually impact or help them. They were all so sweet and so vulnerable with all the information they shared. It's just heartbreaking. The amount of suicide among doctors. Physicians have among the highest rates of suicide worldwide. But I didn't understand how significant it was until I was in the field. I assumed it wasn't a big issue, the career seemed great with prestige. High job security and income. And it is great. But I didn't know about working 60 days in a row. Operating after being awake for 72 hours on call. Cutthroat competition and training bottlenecks. The constant expectation and pressure to be the best and know it all from seniors and patients alike. The harassment and bullying from colleges that eat their young. Now that I'm working in hospital networks, I don't go more than a couple of months without hearing about another doctor who attempted or committed suicide. There is more open discussion about the crisis, but most remains unspoken. Many doctors in my country won't disclose or seek help for their mental health problems out of fear they'll be reported and have restrictions on their license. And if you are taken to hospital for the suicide attempt, the field is small enough that your colleagues and friends will hear about it. No matter how much staff maintain confidentiality. I visited a friend in ICU who attempted suicide. And he was mortified that he had been transported to the hospital he was employed in. Everyone knew and he moved across the country. And you hear about funerals for an untimely passing of a 30-something-year-old doctor. While nobody talks about how or why they died. We are very uncomfortable talking about suicide. I wanted to post this. But you expressed it perfectly. There's no get help. It's professional suicide. Throw your 12 years of education to the garbage. Have everyone judge you and treat you weirdly have the regulatory bodies breathing down your neck. Just now I am hearing whispers at my new job that a new specialist position was vacated by an untimely passing one said it outright. But it seems he offed himself. I hear from non-medical staff. The doctors won't even mention him at the hospital how he would cry in his office and was having all sorts of hardship. I saw his obituaries and he was an extremely accomplished professional famous for his bright humor of all things. This beep is so widespread and the epicenter is in medical education with its ridiculous hierarchy. Cutthroat competition. Constant humiliation and deprivation. Schools need to change. And mental health services and need schools need to be truly anonymous. The number of deaths and injuries. Industrial maintenance isn't a really safe career path. I personally know four people that have been seriously injured and two that were peeped on the job. I spent 30 minutes in an aluminum refinery once. It was pretty terrifying. Guy showing me around told me how if a fairly insignificant amount of water or moisture got into one of the enormous vats of liquid it would essentially erupt like a volcano. I was ready to leave after that. I work in a die cast plant that has its own foundry. About 30 years ago a popkin made its way into meltdown via a scrap hopper. The resulting explosion put the 4. Oh 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 pound furnace door through the roof. All of our scrap has to go through dryers before it's used to charge a furnace. We also can't have any disposable drink containers. That's exactly what he was talking about. They were super careful at this place. Since they dealt with scrap aluminum they were always worries about an unopened beverage can making its way into the mix. Unlikely. But it would be catastrophic. The amount of suicide rates in the veterinary profession. Eight years after graduation and two of my classmates have committed suicide. High stress. Not fantastic pay. Poor coping mechanism. Bad clients. Etc. will wear anyone down after a time. I think loneliness is huge in the profession too. 
My girlfriend is a veterinary surgeon. It takes a lot of effort to make the relationship work. The ultra long shifts and emergencies slash weird hours etc. take a big toll on your home life. I try to make a special point of bringing her lunch and making sure she eats it all and doesn't run off early lull some days. Or driving her home after a crazy long day slash late night slash mentally taxing emergencies and taking her to work the next day. Random speak like that. It's definitely more work relationship wise than I would have ever imagined. Sometimes when we deliver a stillborn baby that passed a while ago the head may come off in delivery. Fortunately it usually doesn't. Really hoping these were cases where you knew it'd be stillborn ahead of time. And not fully expecting a baby just to get an unpleasant surprise. <sighs> IT security at a lot of places is a joke. You'd be horrified how at some high profile slash hold a lot of your personal data there isn't really an emphasis on security. Sure they do just enough but it's more aimed at protecting their image and whatnot that your data. I work in a software security company. Absolutely no one I work with was surprised by what Snowden revealed. Mostly we were surprised it wasn't common knowledge. The smell of burning human flesh. I'm an industrial welder and occasionally have a molten blob of steel land on exposed skin. We don't mention it outside of work because of obvious reasons. I have a bunch of scars on my right forearm from welding burns that several doctors have accused me of being in for drug user because of. As a hemophiliac, I've been accused of this as well. Got enough track marks on my arms and hands from IVs over the years that they have seriously questioned me before. Luckily medicine advancements has gone a long ways in the past few years and now I can do subcutaneous infusions every week. Trucker here. Repeat by trainers particularly men. On female trainees is kind of an issue that has only really started to come to light. Holy speep. That's a pretty crazy thing to never talk about. Not really creepy. But I work at a wood shop. And it is an absolute OSHA disaster. Safety guidelines are rarely if ever enforced. And corners are cut constantly to get stuff built on time. I'm talking fire extinguishers buried behind scrap wood and other things. Almost zero use of safety equipment. And just a general disregard for what should be standard practice. Really the only reason injuries are rare is because the vast majority of people who work here are experienced and know their speak. A small percentage of people getting tattooed have HIV, AIDS, hepatitis, etc. And they are not always honest on their release forms. I was taught to always treat every client as if they have hepatitis C. So everyone gets the same precautions, safety measures, and equipment sterilization. It's tough though, because we'll have sketchy people that probably use drugs, or come in wanting their house party tattoo fixed, and we have no idea if they were sharing needles. We either make a judgment and deny them service, or treat them like everyone else and use precaution. I've only had one person be honest and tell me they had HIV, while they filled out their paperwork, Work 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. shift at a gas station. The number of construction guys, factory workers, big truck drivers, basically heavy machinery guys who buy two pints of vodka one for each pocket every morning at 6 a.m. and their way to work is quite scary. I work for a student loan company. A lot of people's repayment plan is to pay the absolute minimum slash defer their loans as long as possible and then die. It's usually for older people but I see it with folks in their 20s slash 30s also. Their interest is sometimes more than they make in a month. I can't tell you how many people I've had to reassure that their kids won't have to pay the loan if the parent dies. It usually can't be discharged with bankruptcy either. If feeping sucks that death is the only way out for people. We literally have to have a protocol for how to handle someone threatening to commit suicide so they don't have to pay it. Military, a lot of people I served with were really peeping dumb. Including officers. Also, cancer rates among retirees are insanely high. Cancer rates among retirees are insanely high. Dioxin. Depleted uranium. That speed be good for ya. Irregular here. I'd add the cult of toughness. Yeah. Toughness is necessary. But there's a difference between putting up with the speed tea and clearly maiming yourself to not be weak. It was scary the first time I caught a militianer with gangrene slash trauma to their foot trying to march. 
By the tenth. It was routine. Gangrene. I am not a native English speaker so I often Google words on Reddit. Looking at the pictures usually gives me the context I need to keep reading. I regret Googling that one. I work in TV news and some viewers can be very creepy. People subconsciously feel like they know us. Because they see us every day. In their homes. Some of the mail my co-workers receive is so questionable. Like one guy a well-known and beloved weatherman regularly gets postcards from the same dude that hates him and berates him. Another guy acts as if he actually knows one of our weekend anchors. In his letters talking about how they used to go to various concerts together nope. Once I opened a package with all these random objects band-aids. Lays. A pair of socks. Conversation hearts and five valentines each detailing how the person would storm the building. Once I did a story vaguely related to vaping and within minutes a guy tracked down my personal Facebook and sent me three videos cussing me out and a long rant about how I was a piss and whore and a feeping moron. I was a nighttime DJ for nine years at a small radio station back in the 90s. God I received some weird phone calls and had six stalkers. Sometimes it seemed every psycho in town was listening to my show. A couple of them showed up at the station too. One time the door greeter at Walmart went insane and after she was fired she had lots of time on her hands so she started calling me. Wanting me to broadcast these. Cassette tapes she said contained. Messages she was receiving from God. I quickly learned why DJs don't use their real names. And learned my town had quite a few disturbed people living in it. In education as an administrator. The reality of the frequency of child pupil assault or child abuse and lasting trauma resulting from it is enough to make you drink. It is so shocking the level of incompetence in parents. This is across both private schools. Well-off demographics and high needs. High poverty districts. It is really hard to come to school each day and mask positivity some days. This isn't necessarily creepy. But unsettling. I used to work in the travel industry. You'd be surprised at how many people seriously injure themselves or even die while on vacation. People tend to think they're invincible when they're abroad. Spoiler alert. You are not. Buy travel insurance. If I recall correctly every cruise ship has its own morgue and on the senior cruises at least one passenger passes away each voyage. You would be right on that. You have a cruise ship that can hold thousands of people. Statistically. Someone is going to die on board. Here's a small sampling of what I can say about the legal profession. Personal injury attorneys who advertise are typically good businessmen and terrible attorneys. They will do a great job negotiating with the insurance company, but can't litigate a case to save their life. Home cooking is a real thing. You are generally better off hiring an attorney who regularly practices in a certain circuit or district than hiring someone your friends recommend that would be considered an out-of-town attorney. The suicide rate among attorneys is incredible. The rate of drug and alcohol abuse is terrifying. This is what happens where you work in an adversarial environment with no formal mentoring programs and are forced to work 80 hours a week to keep your law firm partners happy or have to take cases you don't know how to handle just to afford to keep your doors open as a solo slash small firm attorney. I had been in practice less than three years before the first of my classmates Oded. Many solo slash small firm slash mid firm attorneys can't afford to retire. They have to work until they die. You'll see attorneys in court that can barely walk. But they keep taking cases so they can afford to live. It's very sad. The money isn't there like people think. My first three years of practice I made less than 35k per year. I was in practice for six years before I made more than 50k gross in a single year. And I was not some sort of anomaly. I had classmates who have been in practice over 10 years and still make less than 50k a year. I work in an eco-friendly importer who imports. Well, eco-friendly products that replace disposable or single-use products. Especially plastics. The amount of plastic involved in production, shipping, storing, and packing those items is insane. It's just all stripped from the finished product before it lands in the customer's hands. There's also issues with ordering from abroad, everything from factory waste to the fuels to get it here. It's really, really sad. And nobody addresses it. Ever. It's not talked about, we just strip off the plastic and toss it before shipping to the customer. 
Not really creepy but sad. And so very obviously ignored.